on. We move on to 1 p.m. Eastern. Green Bay Packers, 4-1, and 2-1 and one on the road at Chicago Bears, 3-2, and 2-0 and at home. Soldier Field in Chicago, Illinois. God, I try so hard to talk about football, but Bebsy, you have – what do you not have the most enormous vividness of these penguins stepping up every time they have an injury? Every time that Malkin or Crosby's out, this this team just this they seem to to come together nonstop, and then then they come back and they're fully healthy and get knocked out of the playoffs like ass clowns. Yeah, it's it's uh, it's very bizarre. It's it's reminiscent of that. Um that 2001 Toronto Maple Leafs team that played most of the playoffs without Matt Sundin uh, and dominated. And then they were like, well, when Matt Sundin comes back, we're going to win the cup. And then they, uh, of course, got ousted by Carolina that got swept by Detroit. But that's ancient history. That's 20 years ago. What the hell am I talking about it for? Let's move on. Bertie says, and why didn't you bet them? And fear. But I did bet the first period under one and a half, which you have to admit correlates perfectly with the pen stepping up and the lightning not. So you have to give me the benefit of that there. I did bet the first period under one and a half with a plus line. That correlates with Penguins playing well tonight. Packers come in off a wild 25-22 overtime win at Cincinnati. Mason Crosby missed three straight potential winning field goals before hitting a 49-yarder in overtime. It was absolutely crazy. It was the Evan McPherson missed two field goals. The whole thing was absolutely crazy. Let's take a look at the market move in this spot. This total opened up at 46. It's now at 45. Let's move over to the Packers. Open up minus three and a half. They are now minus four and a half. Mason Crosby had converted all six field goals, 11 PATs in the first four games. Rodgers, 27-39 for 344 yards, two touchdowns, one interception. Devontae Adams was excellent. 11 receptions for 206 yards, one touchdown. Aaron Jones, 14 carries for 103 yards. He looked like a boss. And so did A.J. Dillon. A.J. Dillon ran eight times for 30 yards and caught four passes for 49 yards and a touchdown. He's a truck. Packers got three sacks, eight quarterback hits on Joe Burrow. But this is a huge but because Jair Alexander was put on the injured reserve on Saturday and could require season-ending injury, and Kevin King left in the second half with a shoulder injury. That's a lot to deal with. Lucas Patrick started in place to center Josh Myers. Myers is again listed as questionable this week, and guard Elgin Jenkins was inactive last week. is listed as questionable this week. Cindy plays horses rolling with us. It was great to cap NHL with you today. Cindy, thank you so much for joining us. Bears coming off a 29-road victory over... The, uh, at the Raiders. The Raiders were clearly r- reeling over the controversy surrounding their head coach, so I don't know what to make of it. The Bears' 32nd-ranked offense managed just 252 yards. Chicago's defense allowed three points from the Vegas first seven drives, and I don't know what to make of that stat either, to be honest with you. Justin Fields, 12 of 20, 111 yards, so his first career touchdown pass. Hyper extends his left leg. Got the wind knocked out of him. Only missed two plays. I respected that. I liked seeing it. Darnell Mooney led the receivers with three catches for 35 yards. I think we're going to have to get used to these kind of wide receiver stats for this football team. Allen Robinson, four passes for 32 yards. With David Montgomery on the IR, Khalil Herbert ran 18 times for 75 yards. Damian Williams had another good game, 16 carries for 64 yards. Roquan Smith, 10 tackles, one pass deflected. Khalil Mack looked good after facing injury concerns. Eight tackles and one sack. They recorded three sacks and four quarterback hits. A right tackle, Jermaine Ifedi, left in the second quarter with a knee injury. I got I couldn't find an update on him. Uh, linebacker Caleb Johnson also went out with a knee injury, no update. Uh, backup linebacker Jeremiah Atochu injured his pectoral muscle. He's listed as out. Akeem Hicks missed last week, inactive. He's listed as questionable. And tight ends Jesse James and J.P. Holtz were inactive and also listed as questionable. Market moves from 3.5 to 4.5 on the Packers. Do you agree with this market move? Yeah, absolutely. I, I think you have to – back the Packers or no play here because like you said what it's difficult to decide what to make of the Bears the Bears won last week but they won because one team didn't show up and rightfully so I wouldn't want to play for a piece of shit coach like Gruden uh so I wouldn't want to play for a piece of shit coach like Matt Nagy either so I look at this game like the Pack are going to continue doing what they're doing, which is winning football games, 
and the Bears are going to go back to uh, us not knowing what to expect from them. It's going to be a tough spot. It's a divisional matchup. Yes, the Bears are at home, but Justin Fields is not being given any help by his head coach or his offensive line. This offensive line is putrid. Uh, and now they have no Montgomery, which makes things harder for them. Yes, they pull out the win this week, but again, I think circumstances uh, were the only reason they won that game and not because uh, they're anywhere near as good as the Raiders football team. So uh, I, I wish... I wish I would have got in early on this game. Uh, I have pause to bet this number now, but I I do like Green Bay in this. They're just they're just a superior team with a superior coach. Do you agree with this market move towards the under? Uh, I didn't read out the numbers here in the market, and I apologize for that. 6,115 tickets in. They say with 78% confidence that the Bears will go down to plus four. That was said in the chat by Mississippi Whisper. Oh, he says take the four and a half while you got it. No, it, this. Uh, sorry, I misread that. Um, here we have Sports Insight, Insight saying with 78% confidence the Bears will go down to four. So if you like the Bears – at plus four and a half, you should probably take it now. I find that very interesting. 78% of the tickets, 74% of the cash on the Packers. The money line total, or the money total isn't up yet, but we have 53% of tickets on the over. I think this will be a slowly moved game. I'd love to know if Akeem Hicks was going to play. Well, but, but we've also seen this strategy from Green Bay. They get a lead, they run the ball. They slow the game down. Uh, yeah. I think you're going to see this, so I think – the under is very much the play in this game because the Bears at the best of times aren't putting up points in bunches. Very, very interesting. Dutch Boy Fresh looking at the team total under 20 for the Bears. Uh, Fernando looking at backing the Packers here. So, again, if you have any interest in the Bears, take them now, it looks like. At least that's what Sports Insight's saying. I think I might – uh, tail that look from our boy Dutch. Uh, Bears team total over. I'm team not going to wait. He wants team total over. No, Bears team total under twenty. Yeah, that's that's what I uh, that's yeah. what I want to tail. Not any sort of team total over. That makes sense to me. That makes sense to me too. All right, uh, Bebsy, I'm going to line shop for you at a few different books when this show is over. I'm not going to do it right now, but I'd be curious to see what Bet365 is hanging on this spot. So why don't we go over there quickly. The Chicago Bears team total over at, at Bet365 is 19 and a half, juice to the over. So it probably just moved from 20 and a half. Very interesting. Uh, so I'm going to line shop. But Bears team total under 20 and a half. I'll just put a question mark beside it. And I think that makes sense. So I'm going to put a bunch of asterisks beside the question marks. All right. There we go. Bears team total under for Bebsy. Second look on the board. Snook Slayer says Packers run the clock. Bears D helps keep it close. I like the points. I'm interested in the points as well at plus four and a half. It's just that I can't let what happened last week have anything to do with my uh, handicapping of the Bears because I don't know. I can't explain what was going on with the Raiders. And I feel like if you were going to try to explain it, you would say that they were a complete mess without their head coach and we shouldn't. And look what Fields still did with 111 passing yards. So, Yeah, I refuse to blame Justin Fields for that. He literally is no help. Oh, because of Nagy, not because of his the talented wide receiver. There's no, he's talent. got talented wide receiver, uh, and, but he has no O line, and and his head coach clearly has no game plan for the guy they drafted. Uh, another really interesting stat here from our guys in the chat: Dami Gunrici, who was on our Sunday show and did an excellent job, says um, last ten years road favorites off a loss versus teams off of a win, fifty nine percent against the spread. Road favorites off a loss for teams off a win 59% against the spread. And teams off 20-point losses, 54% against the spread. 
Arthur Mead looking at the New York Giants seem to London. We're going to get there soon. Eric Chang says uh, Packers defense is pretty awful and hurt, though. Will it play a factor? I don't see how – I guess the issue is their, their real problems are in the secondary, and can Justin Fields take advantage of them? You know, you know? Can Matt Nagy take advantage of it by dialing up plays for downfield? I don't think so. Sorry, I had a little mic there. I hit the cord. Uh, yeah, I, I, I don't know. That's the problem. I think it's a twofold. The other thing, too, is that that old line can't pass block for shit. So that's why you're seeing all these short passes. They, they, they don't have time to let Allen Robinson stretch the field. Poor well, Allen right. Robinson. More great stats coming off of uh, Dommy Gun Ricci. Road division dogs last two years, 57% against the do- uh, spread. And uh, plus six or less last two years, 62%. This year, over 70%. All right, let's move on from that spot. I've still yet to move on the card, but that team total under for the Bears makes sense. I, I wish I could get more information on Akeem Hicks. But... Cindy Plays Horses says the weather could be challenging. Before we move on, let me jump into that. Something I probably should have already have gotten, but uh, let's just go to Chicago weather here quickly for Sunday. It looks – it's gorgeous. There's wind, 13 miles an hour, but it's gorgeous. And Dommy Gun says Chargers fit that short road dog. All right, so Bebsy's on the on two different spots on the board. I've yet to move, but that team total under does make sense. 